Okay, so my dumbass figure out what is wrong with this circuit. One major reason, I believe, is that I was using electrolytic capacitors, which are one of these, instead of ceramic capacitors. So the difference between those is that an electrolytic capacitor only works in DC, or it has only one polarity. So ceramic capacitors have both polarities, meaning they work with AC signals. So I believe that was the number one issue with my circuit. So I had to salvage these ceramic capacitors from here. Uh, this is just like an old school uh, oscilloscope that I bought but it didn't come working so that was kind of a waste. So I got all these spare parts which is pretty cool. Here's a little, little heat sink right here that I could use with this MOSFET and there's a transformer right here. There's some cool things in here that I could use for potential future projects. Okay so to understand the math behind this one, I was choosing incorrect capacitors and resistors for my circuit. So this is the practical circuit that I'm going to be implementing. And basically it comes down to the output. So the output is basically the integrator, which is this integral right here. And this proportionality constant, which is R1 times C. So that's this resistor and this capacitor. So there's this thing called unity gain, meaning there's one to one gain depending on the frequency of the input. So the gain actually is dependent on the frequency. So you gotta keep that in mind. And you can set this based on the frequency that you want unity gain, or you can set it based on the capacitor you are using. I wanted to use the unity gain or the gain of one at let's say one kilohertz. Unfortunately, I don't have a capacitor that large or that small. I really can't set the gain based on the frequency. So I have to set it based on the capacitor. So what you do, you could change this value, so this is actually a C. So it's 1 over 2 pi r times C, and that'll give you the cutoff frequency or the frequency at which the gain of the input when doing the integration would equal 1. It turns out it's roughly 1 kilohertz for what capacitor I'm using. So I'm using 1.360 nanofarads, and that'll give me a unity gain at 1.17 kilohertz roughly. And here it is on this oscilloscope and I know it's working properly now. There was one issue when setting up the oscilloscope. Apparently there's an issue with DC coupling and AC coupling. When I use DC coupling the circuit doesn't work at all when measuring on the oscilloscope. When I use AC coupling the circuit works perfectly. So this is what I have right now. I, I'm sending basically a 1 volt sinusoidal input at 1.08 kilohertz and the output is that blue line and you can see that the unity gain or the gain is exactly one and it's performing the integration correctly so to show that this works if I change the frequency the blue line should change in amplitude so as I increase the frequency the amplitude of the output decreases if I ink or decrease the frequency the amplitude increases so that's how it is dependent on the frequency. So that may be a new limitation on this analog computer, meaning I may only be able to send 1.03 kilohertz or so. I mean, I guess I do have that potentiometer so I could change the resistance value so I can make it different. I guess I'll figure out how that would work later. I'm just happy that I got this integrator working. So there's actually another resistor in parallel with this capacitor. And what that does, these two values, these R2 times C, actually changes the rise time of the integration. And I'll show you that in the simulated circuit. Okay, so this is not exactly the circuit on my breadboard, and that's because the simulation is having issues what is what I'm comparing to in my breadboard. So I'm just going to use this example for now, but the same concept will work. This is actually the cutoff frequency, or the unity gain, is at 1 kilohertz for this specific configuration. And as you can see, in the simulation, it doesn't show 1 to 1, or ac actually it's just like shifted downward. And you may be asking, well, there's an issue here. Well, actually, it's not an issue. It's... You have to take into account this rise time for this configuration over here. So this RC value determines how fast the integration happens, so to speak. So let's change this time frame. You can see that this value right here is the rise time. So that's that exponential charge due to that capacitor and resistor. So you can see that if you change this RC value over here, it'll change that rise time. So let's change this value to something smaller. So I changed the value of this resistor to one mega ohms 
and you can see that the rise time is a lot quicker than before. However, it also affected the amplitude as well. So I believe that's probably the issue I had with my previous simulated circuit. This resistance value affected my output. So I'll probably mess with that a little bit more. But basically, we have a circuit that's working. That's what I'm proud with because I was struggling with this for a while. There's a lot of things that I've learned. So you add a resistor here to combat input bias current, I believe. This resistor R4 and R3 matches, so you basically have an identical voltage input at the terminal. And there's a resistor in parallel with this capacitor, which basically creates an inverting amplifier for low frequency signals or DC inputs. There's a specific value depending on this capacitor or the frequency that you send an input at that determines the gain of the output. And if you want that one to one gain, then you have to perform that mathematical operation to figure out these capacitance and resistor values. Usually you set two out of the three, so if you want 100k resistance here and maybe a one kilohertz signal, then those two values will determine the capacitance value. And then finally, this resistor and this capacitance value determine the rise time of the integration, and this resistance value apparently affects the output of the gain. So there's a lot of tuning that you have to do with the circuit apparently, which is great to know. So next time when I build this circuit, it should be working flawlessly. So now what I'm going to do, probably in the next video or so, is that I'm going to correct this simulation and hopefully add on another integrator onto this circuit and hopefully it will be working properly.